there they were. All three lined up neatly in the car park and the man from Porsche shouting, Which one do you want first? Oh dear. Four decades of trying to purge the gluttonous juvenile within, and still he lives on, without a moment's hesitation. The reply was, The red one, please. The red one was the mighty Panamera Turbo. In an instant, the eyes had clocked the silver Panamera 4S and blue 4S diesel sitting next to it and the frontal lobe had dismissed them as underlings. You can read about the Panamera Turbo here, but for now, let us look at why it was so wrong to poo-poo the petrol 4S. Compared with the outgoing 4S, the V6 engine has shrunk to 2.9 liters but has a couple of centrally mounted hot V turbos plumbed in. So not only is the new engine 14 kilograms lighter than the outgoing 3.0 liter unit, not to mention considerably more efficient, but it also produces an extra 20 bhp and 22 pounds foot more torque, which results in 0 to 62 miles per hour with the optional sports chrono package. In just 4.2 seconds the 0 to 100 miles per hour sprint takes a mere 10 seconds. It does not feel that fast. Panamras seemingly don't t, even the chest weight turbo models, and being a hereditary condition, this afflicts the 4S as well. Yet judging by the rapidity with which those liquid crystal speedo characters click over, be in no doubt, it is rapid. The 4S is quite a screamer, too, but as always you need to switch on the optional sports exhaust to exploit the acoustics. Then it barks pleasantly raspy tones, as opposed to the kind of spine-tinglingly fruity ones that would inspire you to poke about in the engine's upper reaches. You still will, though, because of the delicious power delivery. Peak torque may begin at 1,750 revolutions per minute, but it feels at its strongest beyond 3,000 revolutions per minute, then keeps building exponentially until the needle is pointing at the red zone. Add in the keen throttle response and it feels quite unturbo like with a power delivery more akin to a naturally aspirated multi-valve motor. The PDK dual-clutch automatic gearbox is good in either auto or manual mode, darting swiftly and seamlessly between ratios. Only its software blots the copybook by blocking manual down changes until the revs fall inexplicably low. You sense nothing more than a laptop tweak would alleviate this little woe. There are no such issues with the programming of Porsche's new 4D chassis control four-wheel drive system, though. Even if you do the incomprehensible and switch off all the driver assistance programs on a sodden, challenging Scottish mountain road, it gives you a few degrees of twitch at the rear, after which it shuffles the power frontwards so you can rifle it out of corner. Measured fun would be an apposite description. That could apply to the charmed handling as well. The Panamera may weigh the equivalent of a mid-sized hippopotamus, but sticking with the critter theme, it changes direction with the agility of a housefly. That s partly down to the Panamera's new party trick of optional four-wheel steering, which aids rear end stability at speed to the extent that Porsche can fit a quicker rack. And apart from a slightly digital feel around the straight ahead, the wheel builds weight so effectively that you can use that lively front end with utter confidence. There's enough feel to help you gauge the reaction between tread and road, too. This lucid fluidity spills into the suspension. We thought the turbo was good, but the 4SS wave like V6 affords it a bonus dimension of body control, albeit with the adaptive air sprung setup fitted. It's supple and comfortable in its softest mode but has a tenacious, terrain hugging resolve in its firmest setting. Too stiff? Not on your Nelly. There's enough vertical wheel control in hand to keep things resolutely stable, even on the crinkliest roads. Inside the Panamera, Porsche has upped the Resmitas. Those messy buttons on the MK1S center console have been smoothed off with touch-sensitive switches in the MK2. There's also a new multimedia system with all the connectivity you could desire, displayed with sharp imagery on the 12.3 in main screen. There are also two smaller TFT screens flanking the traditional analog gauge rev counter sitting right in front of you. It's all very clever indeed, but to be honest, not particularly practical. The touch-sensitive buttons are tricky to locate on the move, while the multimedia system's layers of menus are so numerous as to be a distraction.